Okay, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now I'm back in the studio today, and I'm gonna paint something a little different again. I'm gonna paint a landscape, quite a distant landscape, near to far, but this one's gonna be about the beautiful morning mist on a frosty morning, or very cold morning. So what we've got is a lot of distance, starting with the foreground, a few buildings, there's gonna be a bit of a farm scene. So we've got a few buildings, one on the corner here, then jutting off into the distance and different headlands and whatever else. So this will be in the early morning light, capturing that beautiful magic light that you get in the first few minutes of the day and also the last few minutes of the day. That special complementary colour where you get those warm and cool colour mixes. It allows you to really pump, sorry, it allows you to really pump the painting up with plenty of colour, but at the same time, it still feels very realistic because it is actually realistic because at that time of day, as you know, you get all those beautiful colours. All right, so now I've already drawn a few lines because uh, I want to make sure I get the composition right for this one. And I feel like now I've got the right blend, all right? So what we're going to be doing is kind of leading in from here with a bit of foreground buildings, leading out into the paddocks, some nice little buildings out here, and then different mountain ranges just jutting off and a few clouds chuffing around and all that. Okay, pretty excited. Let's get into it. A little bit of burnt sienna, alizarin and crimson, maybe a bit of red and green, which is the opposite on the colour wheel. So really, as soon as you put the opposite colour with it, it'll really darken it. But I'm half mixing, so I've got that. Uh, with the half mix, you get the half, you get the brilliant bits of red and brilliant bits of green coming out next to each other. Stand back and they blend into a dark, but up closer, there's you know broken colour, fresh colour. Okay, so alizarin crimson, a beautiful red, burnt sienna, fruity and green, darkens it off. So what I'll do is I'll establish these corners straight away, and I'm going to put a lot of red in it as a bit of an underpainting, and then I'll put the greens a little bit over the top as well. That'll get to that beautiful warm and cool contrast. It really warms the painting up. Bit of green with that. Just want to really make sure that the white is taken care of. Get rid of the pure white on the edge. Okay, so we just got a bit like that. I'm going to work out what we're going to do here. These ones can go. We want the whole painting to be varied and random. So I'll introduce a little bit of yellow ochre with that green now. That'll give those a little bit more of the actual colour of foliage. Do the same here, but a bit of, bit of greens and blues, pull it off, half mixing it in. A bit more yellow ochre, burnt sienna. So these are going to be quite neutral tones here because this area is visually not important. So you're trying to have it here, but then you're going to draw the viewer's eyes into the painting. So it's darker here. And it'll lead you out to the light source. All right, so yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a little bit of white and blue. I've got some sky blues just there, some light blue, phthalo blue that I mixed earlier when I was just drawing in, that's stable blue and white. I've still got a bit of that mixture there. So I'll mix it with these yellow ochres and burnt siennas and we'll get a bit of a toned down, a low value, if you like, uh, grass tone. A bit more yellow ochre, ready and green. Burnt sienna just browns it up a bit so it doesn't look so artificial. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, we'll just, Just get all these edges done. I just want the edges of the painting nice and neat so it doesn't need a frame when it's finished. A lot of people in Australia particularly like to hang their paintings without a frame, so I just like to get it all looking lovely when it's got no frame on it. 
bit more green greens and burnt siennas, a little bit more of the foliage colours. Let's mix that in. General out of focusness in here because like I said, it's visually unimportant. And I'm just going to lighten that tone with a bit more Viridian Green and White as it gets out here. Put some Thalo Blue with it, which is a very strong green blue. You only need a tiny bit of it and it really pops. That'll help with that frosty sort of misty feel in the morning light. So we're still working in the shadow portion here so far. All right now I'll just clean this off. It's got a little bit of ultramarine with those Viridian, with those alizarin crimsons, etc. And that's really helping to darken this section off here. I want it to be dark and mysterious and in shadow, morning shadow there. There we go. So that'll be the inside of the old uh, shed or barn or whatever it is. Go for some phalo blues again. Viridian greens, really cold, frosty colours. That's it. Break that in a little bit into the soil, like it's... Alright, so we're starting to get some foliage... Foliage on the side of the painting here. It's getting a little broken up with the negative spaces with the grasses in between. Okay, yellow ochre, burns the end of Viridian Green. Just placing a little bit more of the realistic colour over the red so the red shines through. As a powerful thing, but it's still based on the on the realistic colour, which is more of the green colour. Alright, I'll just stand back and analyse that composition, see if I'm getting the flow on, something like that. We'll just go with that for now. Alright, now I'll go with some ultramarine blue and white. I'm just going to paint some of these distant shadows. I'm painting the darker tones in first. Bit of phalo blue with that. Just want to feel what we go here. I'm just going to put some shadowy tones in. I can paint over that if I've done too many, which I think I have, but that doesn't matter. I can paint over that. It's best to put the dark on. The darker tones on first. Work the light over the top. Here we go. Okay, something like that. Feeling the composition here. Some more whites and blues. Just trying to get those real frosty tones in here. Get the white covered. Quick smart. Go a bit of magenta now just to break up, put a bit of variety of colours and tones in there. So I'll go for a little bit of magenta with the white in that shadow there. Put a little bit of mystery into that. Like I said, I'm just feeding the shadows in first into the painting, just feeling what the painting's going to feel like, getting the composition right in my head, and then start working some light source on it. All right. Phthalo blues. I'll just lighten that tone. Now, I've got phthalo blue. Putting plenty of white in it. Really 
dreamy distant blue because that's we're going back now further into the painting so I want a lighter tone so I'm just knocking in a few lighter tones here a few lighter morning shadows cast across in the early morning light like so Something like that, All right? I just lighten a few of these ones up too. You may think I'm going crazy here, and uh, you could very well be correct. But at the same time, I'm feeling the composition as I'm going. So I'm just, I find I like to work fairly quick, kind of feel the energy of the painting itself, and working out where things need to go. I might just stand back and see if I got things in the right spot. Okay. Not too bad. Now I'm just going to reinforce the top of this old shed, the rooftop here, get some beautiful cold blue colours. Just want to establish exactly where that is. It'll tilt right back into the painting here. Get some beautiful, beautiful clean colour. Pull that through like so. Right, let's see, what do we got here? Yep. Okay, that's enough of that. Right, let's get into the biggest differences, all right? Now, basically just got some shadows going on here at the moment. Feeling composition now. Get into the rest of this. What are we going to do? Let's paint some sky. Go for some pure white. It's going to be a morning sky, so it's going to have some beautiful ochres, etc., in it. Just do a quick bin run. It'll be beautiful ochres and warm tones. So I've got yellow ochre and burnt sienna at the moment. I'll just mix up a nice bit of that first and see how we go. A bit more yellow ochre. Now that I've got that, I'll mix up another little brew just beside it here with yellow ochre and a little bit of that phthalo blue mixed with it so it'll give a slight kind of light green colour I guess you could say and you get that in the morning light, the early morning light you seem to get that beautiful kind of green haze in amongst all the ochres. Got a few things in the way here, I'll just move them out of the way, get more more elbow space, here we go, that's better. Now, alright. Now just half mix that with those beautiful browns and just see what I've got. I feel like it's good, but I need a bit more yellow ochre in this burnt sienna and yellow ochre mix. Let's see what happens now. Something like what I want. Now you can see the benefit of the knife. You can really apply a lot of paint very quickly with a knife. Once, you, once you've worked out that you want to do it, what you want, you can really put the paint on quick. little variety of marks. Oops, don't want to wear it. Now I stuck the paint on very quickly with just a long mark but now I'm breaking it up a little bit more so you get that beautiful feeling of warm and cool and short marks, more painterly. All right, now there's a bit more white in that mix. Just going a little bit bluer as I get up high, well, not much. It's that kind of blue-green colour. Let's just get that paint on. There we go, get that paint on. Get 
Those oakers, get everything mixed in. That's nice, that's going on well. Okay. It's all happening, it's all happening. Yellow oakers and blues and whatever. Fresh tons of paint on, real painterly sky. Warm and cool contrast, like I was saying. Short marks to give it a bit more energy. Up to the edges to make it all lovely. There we go. All right, so we've got a nice sunsetty sky there. I'll put some warm tones in soon, as in some nice rich cloud colours. For now, we're getting there. I'll just stand back and see if I've got the right colour and tone. All right, not too bad, not too bad, right. Now we're always going for the biggest differences. I'll just clean that knife off a bit. Always going for the biggest differences. Now this, there's a lot of white going on. Let's get rid of that white. Let's paint some of the foliage. We'll go yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a bit more yellow ochre, and the tiniest bit of green in there, pretty and green. Maybe even a bit of blue to use as a green, either way. See what we've got there. Needs a little bit of white to lighten it. A little bit of orange to really, no, nah, not too much orange. We won't go crazy with the orange. So I'm trying to get those beautiful morning sunlit colours, you know, where you get a little bit more white. Well, you get that raked light, low light, really dragging across the surface. So let's just cover it first. Don't muck around too much. We just get the paint on. So when you're working outdoors, you've got to establish the colour, but then you've got to work fast, like so. like so. All right, let me have a look at that. What do we got? Okay, now I'll work with a nice grass tone. What are we going to use? A bit of white. It's going to be a light tone, obviously. Now, I may make up, mix up a very light magenta and white. So there's tons and tons of white in that magenta. It makes a very light tone. Plenty of white in that, right? It's a nice juicy colour, look at that. And then I'll mix up some sort of, just do a quick bin rubber first. It's got a bit too much green in those ones, so I'll put that out of the way, those ochres, because they're a little bit green. I want pure ochre, so I want like more like yellow ochre. We'll try some of this warm orange colour, see what we get. I want a very, Nice morning light. So I've got yellow ochre and the white to line it with a little bit of cad red just to spike it. Now let's have a look. It's a nice colour. And if I half mix it with that magenta, get a beautiful dusty sort of pink colour. I need to keep it fairly light because it's going to be a bit misty, a bit of a misty morning. So keep plenty of white. There's a nice mist down in that valley there. Just pull through. Get those colours on a little bit more magenta, pull through that in that morning light. I'm just really trying to get the, the colours on quickly so then I can analyse and work out where I'm correct and where I'm not correct. It's always a play between 
observation and application. Just getting the paint on and then standing back and analyzing it. Working out where you went right or wrong. Let's pull some of those colors in there. Now I want that to be a fairly soft blend between where the shadows begin and the light begins. It's going to be beautiful softness there, so it's ill defined where the one starts and one finishes. So I'm just smearing with the knife, running through, softening and smearing. And uh, still a little bit of blending, make things out of focus a little. Again, I'll stand back and have a look at that. Oh, a bit more of those magentas. It's going to have a bit of a paddock up here in the distance. Let's break it up. Just random bits of grass and whatever showing here and there. Right. Now, those beautiful distant hills that are really gonna, those distant hills that are really gonna set the painting off there. When we cast it back, the first light hitting those will have a lot of magenta in them. So let's just clean up this area so it's a little bit more area to work. So I'm using magenta and white. That's a nice color like I made up earlier. Now I'm going to mix up a white here again. Very clean colors, white with cat orange. Just got to get the right value, tonal value. That's a nice colour. Let's half mix it with that. Let's just see what we've got. I'm half mixing it with that orange. Let's just have a look what we've actually got. It's not too bad. It could go a little bit more magenta. Okay, so it needs to just go a slightly darker tone. So I'll go a bit more magenta and orange. So it's a bit, a bit less white. A bit less white. Right, put that in. With those light phthalo blues in the distance there, on the hills, it'll really set up a good light and shadow combination. Let's put that in. Okay, now just mix up some of these phthalo blues and a few magentas, half mix them together to get a beautiful, mysterious shadow colour. I'm just going to redefine some of these shadows. Now just lighten it a little bit with white. Just going to redefine some of those shadows there. Phthalo blue, magenta. Bit of red and green, what do we got? 
Right, just knocking a few shadows on the edge of things here. A couple of them got a bit lost. What I'm trying to do is establish the feeling of the raked light across that beautiful foliage. Just lighten that tone a little. Just feel that light coming across the painting. Maybe lighten that a tiny bit, that one that I just stuck in. Go against the, across the form too, so it's not just a long shadow. Now this is, before I put all the details in, I like to just basically get all the feeling of the painting in there. And like I was saying, this painting's about mist, so I want to make sure, I, before I go putting the details in, that I really get the feeling down in the valleys here of mist. So I've got to add a bit more white to those blues where the fog tends to settle down in the bottom of the valleys. That's where you're going to get your beautiful frosty, mysterious look the most. Alright, we're starting to get the feeling of morning light in the mist now. One thing that's definitely not quite there yet is that morning clouds. So I'm going to go some cads and whites. Let's just see what we've got there for starters. It's giving it a really nice pink look. May just drop a tiny bit of cad yellow in that. It's a little bit too... It's just a little bit too pinky orange. I just want to get the right one. Just get it how I want it before it apply. Now let's see what we got. Let me just have a quick look. That's good, but it needs to go a tone lighter. So I add a bit more white to the mix. A little bit more of the uh, orange rather than the yellow. That's good. Just pull that in. Beautiful puffies underhead just there. You're chuffing off over here, I might just throw a splash of magenta in with that. These clouds are just chuffing around. A bit more here, a bit more there. Feel it as you go. Gonna add a bit of burnt sienna to that mix with the orange. Just trying to get a deeper, slightly, just slightly lower on the horizon there. I just want a little bit more of the uh, siennas and less of the yellows. Let's have a look. So it's almost like it's got a, just a little bit more of that magenta color. It just goes slightly pinker as it gets clo <coughs> closer to the horizon, sorry. Slightly pinker closer to the horizon and slightly more yellow as it goes up. Let's stand back and have a look. That's all good. Look at those beautiful colours on that. I don't know if you can see that, but that's got those beautiful morning sky colours. You can see that. It's a mixture of ochres and greens and all that. Half mixed. Okay. Now, let's just get this roof a little bit more refined. Uh, what do we got? Here's some of those magentas and blues and whatever. Just with a knife on edge, I'm just going to pick out maybe a bit of a gutter system. Nice rusty old gutter system. few upright poles holding the old thing up. Up 
open up a bit there as it drops into that. Just clean up some of that draft and chip. Right now, I'll probably add a little bit of rust colour to that roof, the old tin roof. A little bit of rust, I'll go some burnt siennas, that's a nice rusty colour. Burnt siennas and white just to lighten it a little. Let's see what we've got. Just a few rusty sheets here and there. Bit of the ridge cap rusting. Bit of a line through here. Just going to throw a bit of misty white through here, which is going to kind of muck up that middle ground for a bit. But what I'm trying to do is just get slightly lighter tones in there, so I'll just mix that in there. Little marks with a knife, big marks. Just blend it to get that mist going in there down in the valley, and then. We can start uh, putting more detail on, but just want to get those major tones right first. The gentles and whites in here really lighten the tone there. Something like that. Right, that's looking good. I'm going to go one step further and just lighten her up a bit more. Really get that mist in here. I really want it to lighten up now. I'll go a bit more green. White. Lighten that tone, really. Put a bit of a mist through there. Just feel that morning mist. All right. Okay, so now there's a lot of bulk colours and tones. There's a lot of bulk colours and tones. I'll just soften some of these. Wipe the knife clean each time. Just softening a few of those tones in the shadows. You just go by feel here. Okay, now, I feel like I've got a major block in, foreground, middle ground, distance, whatever. Now I want to put a few lovely little buildings in the morning mist and a few trees and branches, like a few twigs and trunks and whatever else, okay. All right, got a few smaller knives if I need them. What are we going to do here? Just get a bit of red. Crimson. crimson. Just going to pitch a nice farmhouse in there. Do is I get that knife. I've applied the paint. I'll get that knife and lift up on the underside to get rid of to help draw the picture, draw the roof better. Okay, so I've got that there. Get some pure whites. A little bit of cad yellow, a little bit of cad red, some nice warm light tones. Plenty of white in that mix. 
half mix. Okay, what do we got? Locking in a little bit of a building there. Grab some more pure white. All right, I reckon just here. A few more acres with that. So I've got a little bit less white. Just knocking up different buildings just here. I might have a bit of a hay shed. Off in the distance here, I'll have a little bit of something else going on. What are we going to have? A little shed roof there. Get some more, get some magenta and some blues, half mixing together, you get that beautiful roof colour, we'll just bang that in there, stick a roof on that shed. Bit of an upright there. So we're just basically adding a bit of detail now. A nice vertical line there can be some sort of power pole. It's a knife on edge, picking out that detail. Nice on edge again. What I'm doing here is picking out a few of the beautiful gum trees in the morning light. Their branches are starting to stand out in the morning light, so you stick a bit of that in. More activity around the uh, shed. What do we got here? We're going to put something here that could be like a water tank. Just keep adding stuff. The illusion detail. The light's catching trunks all over the place. So we'll just keep adding stuff in here. on edge. The light is catching, there's a lot of tree activity here so sticking that in. All right, now I really feel like I've got that mystic morn. Let's make a light blue here. Pick out some of the shadows. Look at that beautiful big cloud there. A little bit more of those blues. Just feel those shadows. There we go. It's all about light and shadow. That's what I'm saying about this early morning light. You can 
really get the warm and cool contrasts. So I'm putting those blues against those warm tones and it really pops. Alright, just pick out a bit of light and shadow here and there. And pick out the top of the roof here with a bit of light in the background. All right, getting there. Now, I'm really enjoying what's going on, but I reckon just to add a bit of interest, I might add a little bit of cattle into the old scene and just really lift it up a little. Let's have a look. So what I'll do is I'll work with some darks. We'll go the uh, alizarin crimson and burnt sienna with a little bit of blue in it, just to gray it off a bit. A little bit of white to lighten it because it is a sort of misty painting. We want it a little bit lighter. All right, now where does this go? All right. Just want to place maybe one here. Okay, so now. With the knife on edge. Just drawing in some details here. Just put some cattle in here and there. Now I'll just place this one in first and have a look at the composition. Just a little bit more of this here. Okay, I'll just stand back for a minute. All right, now just a few cattle, just placing them in the right spot here and there, I guess. Now we've just got to work out where. Just lighten that one off a bit. So I'll just go for a little bit more blues and whites because that's down into the mist. We'll just lighten her off. So you've got your burnt siennas, ultramarine blues, alizarin crimson, just to make a dark tone. Place a few here and there now. All right, now I'm pretty happy with what's going on. We'll just get a bit of orange highlight. Now I've got all the foregrounds in blue shadow rolling out into the sunlight. Now I'm just going to flick one or two little extra marks of, of the warm tone just down in here. Not much, just a little bit. Let's soften that. And what that'll do is just help balance the painting in colour. So now you've got the cool colours here predominantly and a lot of warm there. 
but you've just introduced a little bit of the warm there so the whole picture flows as a unit. Alright, pretty good now. We've got the cattle convincingly in. Got a nice blend of light and shadow. Got the morning light mist in the valley there, jutting out into the distance. So we've got the beautiful combination and contrast of the foreground, powerful and dark and bold, fading right off into the distance with the magentas and the blues and much cooler colours and the whole thing's receding and then off into the clouds. I feel like I've got the great feeling of reality but at the same time I'm able to use all these abstract colours because I'm painting at that time of day, morning and evening, when the colours can be so bright and still very, re very realistic because they're actually like that at that time of day. And it's only a thing that'll last for like 10 minutes, like it's a real fleeting moment. So it's a great way to get plenty of life and plenty of romance into your painting, is to paint at that time of day. All right, pretty happy with it. Let's get the camera off and we'll have a close up at all the technique and see what you guys think. All right. And also, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. Hit the thumbs up if you like it, spread it to all your mates, just spread the good word in general. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.